Good evening, everyone. Today we have a very special guest, very special woman, Grandanian Canadian educational administrator, advocate for social justice, fairness commissioner of Ontario. She has been school principal, parliamentarian secretary to prime minister, member of parliament, 1993 to 2006, Minister of State for Multiculturalism and Status of Women, 2002 to 2004. She was made a member of the Order of Canada for her distinguished career as, as an, an educator and advocator for social justice in Canada. Jean Augustine. Scholarship Fund was named for her which she helps to support single, single mothers, mothers to, to undertake post-secondary post study at George Brown George Brown College. College. She, was, she, was, she, was she was appointed, appointed CBE, CBE commander, commander of the Order of the, of the British, British Empire, Empire in the 2014 birthday honor for services, for services to education and politics, and politics in Grenada. In Grenada. Grenada. From, from which she which had, she had immigrated, immigrated 54 years ago. Years ago. I, will I will only mention a few of her awards. Of her awards. Honorary, Honorary Doctorate, Doctorate of, of Laws from, laws University, from of University of Toronto, of Toronto. McGill, University, McGill University, Trenet University, Trenet University. And, there and there are a few more, few I know three, I know three or five. She chaired, she York, chaired University, York University Law Department, Law Department for, longest for longest time. And it has and been, it has been honor, for honor for me that I have, that been, I have been invited, by, invited her, by her, one of her, one of her annual, annual function, function for, for that, uh, that York, uh, University. York University. There is still, there is still a long, long list, of, list her of her work and, work and accomplishments, accomplishments that I can that take I can an take hour to share with you. I will conclude. I will conclude her intro, her intro on, this, on this, that when I that went when to I went Parliament, to Parliament Ottawa, with Ottawa with Jean Augustine, Augustine where we, also, where we met also met Prime Minister Trudeau, Prime Minister Trudeau. Every, every new, new young, young, old person, old person starting, from, starting security from security to all, to others, all others was familiar, was familiar with, with Jean Augustine, Augustine personally, personally for her for inspiring, her inspiring work, work and inspiring, and inspiring personality. personality. Jean Augustine, Jean Augustine is, is an inspiration for many, for many, 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 many women, women, including, including me. me. I welcome, I welcome Jean, Augustine. Jean Augustine. Thank you, Arush. Hi, Jean. Hi, Jean. Good evening. Good evening. And I'm so very pleased to be with you and to join you on your program. I am always admirous of... Um, of women who can command this new technology and this new challenging world that we're in. So I'm pleased to join you uh, this evening. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Uh, and, uh, I really and I really appreciate, appreciate for, your for your time. Jean, as Jean, as all, know, all know that, that you are, you are extremely, extremely accomplished, accomplished women, women, that you are that inspiration, you are inspiration for, for, all for all women. But it does not but mean, it does that, not you mean that you are here without, here without any struggle, any, struggle, any obstacles, any obstacles woman being well. a woman as well. Uh, I would want, uh, you, I would to want you to just share or, uh, or comment something, comment that, something that, that a little bit, a little bit to inspire, those, inspire women those women who might be, who might be disappointed, disappointed at some point, at some point in, your, in, their in, in their life. Well, I think each and every one of us is born with some skill, some talent, some ability, and uh, being nurtured in an environment with family who would love us from the day we were born and who would inspire us and who would surround us with mentors, um, give us the opportunity to be resilient. I grew up in Happy Hill, St. George's, Grenada, surrounded by family members, uh, people who um, gave me the, the assurance that I was worthy, that I was loved, that there was nothing I couldn't do, and that nothing I should, I should somehow avoid or not attempt to. I grew up at a time when the boys in the family were the ones who were educated. 
And I had a grandmother who insisted that despite the fact that I was not a boy, that I deserved the education because she believed that education was what, and she had an expression, education would raise the family's nose. And I didn't know what that meant for a long time, but she mm -hmm. put the faith in the fact that education would really get me someplace and therefore take with me the family. Um, so I say to young girls and I say to, to women, do the best you can. We all have different talent, different skills, different uh, ways in which we face the world. And as long as we do whatever it is that's within our power to do, we can reach our full potential. That's true. And a lot of hard work, of course. That's right. Yeah, I, I see you. You are you are so hardworking, and um, I mean I really appreciate your stamina and your you know energy and your passion. Everything, it's really uh, something. Well, it's to important to. to have a passion. It's important to yeah. know what it is you want to accomplish. It's important to you know I committed myself way back when to service, to doing for others to having others see my life as, as, a, as an encouragement to their own lives. And, uh, and I learned very early to share and to give. There were several expressions that were used um, around me. To whom much is given, much is expected. And, um, and I grew up in an environment where service, do for others, share with others, take others with you. Um, and, uh, Coming to Toronto in 1960, I looked around for others, others to, uh, to help to make the society yeah. the kind of place that we want it to be. Because yeah. in the 60s, Toronto was not like what it is today, Arouge. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. saw another black face, you said hello. When you saw someone with, um, with something that was really cultural, you tried to find out, where did you buy it? Where did you get it? Because mm -hmm. there were just, the multicultural face of Toronto was mm -hmm. unlike what it is today. At the same time, the policies and legislation were mm -hmm. also not there. So that mm -hmm. a landlord could say, it's for rent, my dear, but not to you. Um, we had no landlord and tenant um, act or legislation. We had no police and community relations. Actually, the Charter of Rights and Freedom did not come till 1982. So those of us who wanted to reach our full potential in the society, who wanted to be included, who wanted the recognition that we were, um, we were a diverse uh, community, we had to work. We had to work together. We had to be activists. We had to be advocates. We had to knock at doors. We had to march. We had to demonstrate. We had to um, make sure that we knew who the representatives were and write petitions and go after what was needed in the society. But we also had to be resilient so that when something didn't work, you didn't give up, but you yeah. went at it again and again and again. And so changes are made. Immigration laws and rules are different today. When you look around and you see the faces of people from all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, when we did get our charter and section 15 addressed the fact that you cannot discriminate on the basis of age and race and sex and nationality and gender. And of course I was in the parliament of Canada when we included uh, the words sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. So it's a different place. And in this different place, and in this pandemic time, I keep talking about the fact mm -hmm. that this challenge in times yeah. has given us an opportunity with um, Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. uh, George Floyd's, um, mm -hmm. I mean, we've lifted the whole discussion around systemic yeah. discrimination. What is there in the society that somehow deter the full participation of everyone in the society? What is there in the society that show the gaps? And, and of course, the pandemic 
was just, yeah. was is an example where gaps are shown uh, in the society between those who have those who don't have yeah. between um, the, um, the the necessities that are needed by some the um, the pandemic has raised all of that and mm -hmm. I think the issue of uh, systemic the discussion around systemic discrimination the 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 questions around uh, that black lives matter have put on the table have created for us mm -hmm. an opportunity to get to know our neighbors to get to know each other to realize who we are in the society yeah. that we are multicultural multiracial multiethnic multireligious yeah. and that we have to work with each other yeah. and that our fate are all joined yeah. This pandemic, it's not just Toronto, it's yeah. all over the world. That's it's, it's, it's something that somehow, um, I hate to say this, but it's almost like a unifying, <laughs> um, you know, that, that um, where everyone is now focused not only on uh, mm -hmm. COVID-19, but on those issues that separate us. Very well explained. I guess it's really a time that uh, uh, we can realize so many factors that we usually don't. Jean, I want to ask your thought on such a big deal that American political arena has welcomed a first female vice president, colored woman, after 200 years of history. What's, what's your say about this? And do you think uh, that in these all 200 years, there was no capable woman for this leadership role in America? I mean, it's a big question. Well, it's, a, <laughs> I, I, I am so happy, so pleased, so exhilarated by the vice president elect, Kamala Harris. Yeah. Because I think she has, uh, in her own history, she has, um, she, I mean, whether one is Caribbean, Mm -hmm. um, background or whether one is South Asian background or, mm -hmm. or whether one is black American background, et cetera, et cetera. I think she has, um, she embodies all of that mm -hmm. so that we can all look to her as examples of mm -hmm. what is possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, the message here, and, uh, she said it quite rightly, um, when she spoke to the young girls and the young people in the room, she said, um, while I may be the first woman, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the last. Mm -hmm. I want you to, to look at this as a possibility yeah. for all women, for all young girls. Yeah. We, I run a center for young girls empowerment. I know. Yeah. And I think this is one of the examples and we yeah. will have a picture up um, at the center as an example of what is possible that you could be from a single parent family, mm -hmm. that you could be from uh, whatever background, that there mm -hmm. is a place for you in the society if you work hard. Because Kamala did not just get there. Remember, mm -hmm. she was a leadership candidate. Mm -hmm. Remember that she was also, she's also a senator from the largest state in, uh, mm -hmm. in the US, mm -hmm. that uh, she's come through different yeah. processes, including the judicial, she, you, you know, you check all the boxes. So yeah. she has worked her way. Things mm -hmm. didn't just come to her, she's worked her way. And uh, it's interesting that you said um, over 200 years, et cetera. I think when we look at, um, I saw a picture actually the other day in one of the papers and they list, they have pictures of all of the men who were vice presidents mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. the number of years. Oh my God, and yeah. here she would be the first woman to be mm -hmm. Uh, in that uh, in that grouping, and it is again when you are the first, and when you come from so many different avenues, mm -hmm. I know that there is going to be a lot of pressure on her. Oh yes, to uh, to meet the demands of all of the different um, the different cultural groups that claim her. Yeah. The Caribbean claim her. South yeah. Asians claim her. The Indians claim yeah. her. Yeah. The Black Americans claim her, yeah. and, all the, all uh, and, the men. and women, all the women yeah. claim her. And yeah. I know what that is when I was elected as the first Black woman, mm -hmm. first African-Canadian woman elected to the Parliament of Canada. Mm -hmm. All across Canada, 
people felt that they had sent me to Parliament Hill. I know. <laughs> right? I had a call. One of the earliest letters I, that the staff yeah. brought to my attention was one from a Black man who was in a prison in BC somewhere. And he says, now that you're reelected, get me out of here. <laughs> I know. So I there know. is all the expectation. Yeah. And of course, we you can't meet everybody's expectation, yeah, yeah. but she has had leadership roles mm -hmm. and she knows how to deal yeah. in those leadership roles. And so the expectation from all of us yeah. is to be supportive because, you yeah. know, we could be very critical, you know, of yes. a woman. We need to be supportive yes. and we need to make sure that we understand what her role is. She's vice president. Yes. She will be assigned whatever it is by the president. She can't just just moonlight and you know and, and go out there yeah. and do her own thing. She and then again, jobs, but then she'll again, bring it's a very difficult time. That's right. That's right. So she'll be delegated jobs and she'll yeah. go out and she'll do a good job and yeah. which she's delegated. So we can't have all the expectation that she's going to cover all these grounds that we yeah. have somehow or the other not been able to um things that we've not been able to accomplish. At the same time, we know that we are in the largest pandemic the world has seen. We yeah. also know that systemic anti-racism uh, and the level of that yeah. is as high as it has ever been. Yeah. We see the marches that have created thousands and thousands yeah. of all around the world that yeah. speak to systemic discrimination yeah. and that uh, and we know also that uh, she would be subjected to not because you vice president elect or you vice president that you would be you would not be subjected to anti-racism to racism and all of those other things that lurk in dark places but um she was raised by a single mother Mm -hmm. and who gave her the uh, affirmation, the mm -hmm. self-esteem. And when we say a single mother, she was, um, she was separated from her husband. Mm -hmm. She raised her, she brought her to Montreal with her. So there's a little bit of the Canadian uh, yeah. in there also. Yeah, um, that's what it that, is. <laughs> that the, the mother was a scientist, a cancer researcher, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, she's, got the best, um, she did the best she can in terms of her university education and watching mm -hmm. her uh, grow up through all of this. So again, there are so many aspects to that woman that all of us could connect with. That's true. Whether it's single mother, whether it's being raised uh, in different places, the kind of immigrant kind of experiences or the different, um, the different, um, ethnic and and the cultural experiences mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that she she's had and have been exposed to, smart, bright, very beautiful. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> she is beautiful, yes. And um, she's very I'm, capable. I'm so happy, so yeah. happy. Same here, yes. Um, and uh, Jean, uh, just the last question, and uh, I mean, it's it's from my heart, like. Uh, it's just for my own sake, but I want uh, your say on that. That I see in our world, it is badly affected by wars, weapon, weapon trade actually, and gender, race, color uh, discrimination, environmental challenges, and the biggest misery of huge amount of displaced people. Do you think gender equality in leadership roles and decision making can make a difference? Of course, of course. All the research and everything else has shown that when there are women engaged and involved in policy making, in decision making, mm -hmm. in the room where decisions are made, mm -hmm. that somehow the yeah. outcome is better. I saw again uh, recently, I was reading an article around the pandemic and they were showing the countries that were able to grapple with the pandemic were run by women. Yeah. You know, whether it's Australia, New Zealand, uh, Germany, you know, all run by women. And those were, <laughs> were 
the COVID seemed to yeah. uh, to be at whatever where um, were more or less led by full by threat, men yeah. and actually okay. strong men and uh, and True. authoritarian uh, men who figure that um, that um, that the science is not important and yeah. that they could um, through sheer will uh, make it go away. Yeah. And so when there are women, and there are all kinds of uh, research, it also shows uh, in situations when if you give, um, if you put money in the hands of women, it, mm -hmm. it, it betters the, the, the family, it betters, uh, the, it's spent on the children's education. Yeah. If, um, if a woman is educated, what that does for the family, oh, yeah. etc. And there are all kinds of research. So it's, uh, it's, it's not, um, uh, the issue of peace, yeah. women and peace, uh, women as peacemakers, women's yes. involvement mm -hmm. in the issues around, because it is their sons and their husbands and their brothers and their whatnot, who of are course. usually um, caught in the situation of war. Mm -hmm. We know yeah. also um, the United Nations, um, you know, um, different conferences that were held and other things about mm -hmm. all the, the United Nations has called for gender parity, mm -hmm. whether it's in the boardrooms, whether it is in the public sphere, or whether it is uh, in, in, in private uh, enterprise, that there be women engaged and women involved. Yeah. Because when there are women in the room, mm -hmm. the conversation is better. And of course, we Always. criticize the, the US for you know, now we just have the first, um, mm -hmm. the first woman uh, elect as uh, as vice president. Our situation is now in Canada has not been all that great either. We've only had one woman prime minister, and mm -hmm. um, and that was a short-lived uh, yeah. tenure. And uh, we have had to to make the moves. We know oh, yeah. we're very proud now to say that we have a gender parity um, exactly. cabinet and uh, we, um, we've we done and we've attended to a whole series of issues mm -hmm. as they apply to women. But at the same time, we know that we have a long way to go oh, to yes. make sure that we have gender parity in our boardrooms, that we have gender parity in so many places in our land and in our political uh, endeavors. At the same time, I think it's important to note that when we say gender, as you've mentioned, and women, as you mentioned, that the issue of black women, women of color, women who are gay, women who are, there are all of these indigenous women Mm -hmm. that we still have a long way to go to make sure yeah. that those women are part of this just society that we're moving towards. Yeah. So um, it's a long way to go. It's slow, but we are moving ahead. And uh, like uh, women like you inspires us. I really appreciate your very valuable time and your very valuable comments on this uh, very important uh, uh, issues and important moment, uh, historical moment of uh, America. So, and even women. So, thank you so much, and I appreciate your time. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, you too.